This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Schmidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... There's Tuesday at 6, Wednesday's at 10, Thursday's at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin, um... Oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome home. Hello and welcome to Vast Wasteland, the video journal of popular culture. I'm Mark Schmidbauer along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Well, tonight we're going to talk about uh, local shows. Shows not only here in the Columbus area, but shows in the Cleveland area and the Cincinnati area and the Dayton area, basically covering a good deal of Ohio. The whole <laughs> as, darn state. As, as it were. <coughs> so, uh, but first, before we get into the big extravaganza of fun, we want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV. Cable 21. Da, da. And also... <laughs> I guess we can rip them off, huh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you, also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, if you want to write into box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Like this person right here. Here's a letter. Dan Donovan of Columbus writes, Just a note to say, keep up the fine work. I enjoy the show and try to watch whenever possible. I'm really not that bored to actually be writing, but I had a few extra minutes. Just kidding. And then he has a little P.S. here. Whatever happened to that fine comedic actor, Joe E. Ross of Car 54, are you? Thanks. Well, what happened to Joe E. Ross? <laughs> Joe E. Ross. He was born in 1905, or some sources give 1914, <laughs> in New York City, New but his York. mother misplaced him for a I couple guess. years. <laughs> Yes, that Joey Ross was on the Phil Silver Show as Mess Sergeant Rupert Ritzik from 55 to 59. Then he was on Car 54, Where Are You, as you mentioned, as Officer Gunther Tootie from 61 to 63. And then he was on that wonderful uh, science fiction epic, It's About Time. <laughs> 
as Gronk from 1966 to 1967. You know, it always seems like that show was on a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, well, in August of 1982, he died. So, so he's not doing too much work but anymore. But I think it, he either did a lot of cartoon voices or his voice was imitated for a lot of cartoons. I think both. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, it's yeah. like a real trademark there. Yeah. <laughs> and he also did Lay's potato chips commercials for, mm -hmm. for a while. Bet you can't eat just one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that oh ooh ooh thing. That was that was his. That big, was his um, big trademark. <laughs> big thing there. And so there you go, Dan. And thanks for writing in. And for writing in, you get absolutely nothing. Exactly. That's right. Thanks. Gratification. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> you got your letter written red right here on the show. So there you go. And remember, people, if you're going to write one, the shorter you write it, the more of it we'll be able to read. <laughs> Oh, and we had the channel changing effect first. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, on to local TV shows. Uh, local TV shows have obviously been around since since the dawn because they're really cheap to do. And mm -hmm. even when you've uh, when you're a network affiliate, you've got to fill up the time when the network isn't pumping anything out, or or you just don't want to pay for their really uh, expensive shows with really cheap shows you do yourself. <laughs> And that's pretty much what most local shows. Now we're not talking as much about the news shows. We're talking about everything else, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anything else that was generated through uh, through local stations. And it, uh, it was cheap to do. You usually get crew people working like really like weekends or something, and you know. So basically, it didn't really cost you any money. You usually get some guy at the station or some local. Uh, you know, like the janitor or something to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and a lot of it was aimed at kids. <laughs> right. Right because we were up early in the morning and we were home after school. That's right. <laughs> right when you couldn't get anything fed to you through the <laughs> network or whatever. Well, and those were the times they figured they had to fill in. That's right. <laughs> and, and okay, fill me in, since I'm not from Columbus, let's, but ever since, I've come Columbus. Here, ever since I've come here, I've been told about this amazing, wonderful show called Lucy's Toy Shop. Well, now let's, let's, let's start off by saying oh. that um, <laughs> Lucy's Toy Shop was actually on in the mornings after the uh, the wonderful network show, Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we all had the captain. Oh, yeah. Everybody can relate yeah. to the captain. And so after that, well, here, here. Yeah. Oh. For those who, who cannot relate to the captain, <laughs> there he is. Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> there he is, right there. <laughs> That's there him. Is. Bob Keeshan, Captain Kangaroo. And here, wait, 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 wait. And he wrote a really good book about here, himself, here's, too. Ooh, an old picture of it. Captain Kangaroo, the early years. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Kangaroo, Mr. Moose, Bunny Rabbit, Mr. Green Jeans. Grandfather Clock. Grandfather Clock. Clock. You had to wake this clock up. Oh, yeah. Fred um, on Channel 2, Channel 1. <laughs> yeah. Fred, yeah. Um, uh, was this a whole... A plethora. Dennis, they, Dennis, the Dennis the painter and guy. Mr. Bainter, the painter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was in the in the more progressive 70s when they... Mr. Right. Slim Goodbody even got on there toward the yeah. 80s. Yeah, this was just... And then the show, the show went to just PBS. Kind of... And then disappeared. <laughs> fell apart there. Well, the captain has gotten old. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> he could still he could still do shows, I think. I, yeah. I think he still wants to do shows, but... Yeah. but the, but if you want to read those a, a pinheads really, of the networks won't put them on. If you want to read a really interesting account of early television, his book. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Um, You're the librarian here. <laughs> You're the uh, person who works at the library. Read more about here. it. <laughs> Bob Keeshan's. Uh, no, he wrote it, so just like look for his name. Bob Keeshan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> look for Bob Keeshan, not Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> don't, don't look for Captain Kangaroo. You won't find him. I don't but think. But it's just <laughs> like a real interesting how he got started. But he got started when. Television got started. He pretty started much. like walked in. He was the janitor, <laughs> that kind yeah, of thing. Pretty much. Well, Why? Come here. We need somebody on camera. <laughs> now, now, you know that Bob Keeshan was actually Clarabelle the Clown off the old Howdy, Howdy Doody, Doody show. Yeah. The original, yeah. Right. So, so uh, that's, well, that's one of those great television secrets. After the Captain, I think all three of us had a different show that was on after the Captain. Right. Okay. And here in the Columbus area, um, that show was for many years Lucy's Toy Shop. And let's see, Lucy, gosh, what is Lucy's? I can't remember what Lucy's last name is or Not was at that time. Things. But anyway, it was Lucy, and she had basically a toy shop. She had a little, she wore a little pinafore dress thing, and she'd come in, and she yeah. had her friends, um, Stanley Mouse and Dragon. Dragon had a special thing he could grow if he got mad, which was just another way to get somebody else in there to put on the big dragon suit and come in here. Ow! 
Ow! <laughs> and they do exercises or something. So, so, so there was a puppet normally, and then yeah, when he got so mad, I would be a guy in a suit. It would be <laughs> Amazing. It was, the, it was the Hulk idea. Oh. <laughs> he got mad, he would grow. But uh, they, they, never really, they never really looked at that as they, but now if you look back on it, that's pretty much what it was. Okay. And, um, that was Pierre. Which came Pierre from the, the Hulk French, and the Dragon. Right. That's Pierre, right. Pierre, Pierre the French Poodle, who would... Um, do the birthdays with her, and the magic birthday cake would appear, and there was Mr. Tree, who they'd wake up to tell stories, and and then she would do a thing where she would uh, get a little, she'd open her hand, there'd be a little ball of clay in there, and it, they'd show Gumby cartoons. <laughs> hey! <laughs> and let's see, um, what else did they do on that show? Um, well, chicken fat, the chicken fat exercises. Okay. The, um, um, Preston. Robert, Preston. Robert Preston did the chicken fat record, and um, well, Lucy just kind of made it an institution. So on, it was kind of uh, like the first aerobic show in Columbus, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. aerobics for kids, and every morning you'd be doing that chicken fat. And by golly, if you got to go to the fair, the, the back when the fair was something to go to, um, <laughs> you could be on, if you got there early in the morning, you could be on the Lucy's Toy Shop show, and the kids all got these, uh, there were these turtle puppets. Oh, uh, turtle puppets, turtle puppets. Turtle pillows, turtle pillows that the kids sat on, and they got to take those home with them. Wow. That yeah, was really a great thing. If you were on the show, too, you would get one, but, um, well, I was just never on there, so I just never was fortunate enough to get one of those Bummer. darn things. But, scarred for but life. Lucy had a shop in, um, in German Village where you could buy a lot of the puppets and little things that they had on the show. You could buy them right there at Lucy's Little Shop in, in German Village. And a merchandising be there. In fact, she might even still be there selling the stuff. So, there was that one, and that one lasted, gee, from early, middle 60s on up into the early 70s, and then uh, Lucy kind of um, gave up the show idea, and there was another character that kind of appeared on there, because they would do at Christmas time, they would do a, a Christmas thing where Santa Claus would make toys, and he would send them out a conveyor, and I think the thing that it did the Santa possibly was um, this Ron the Mailman character who showed up, who was still showing up in hey. things, too, but they... Um, did another show called Friendly Junction, and it was Ron the Mailman and, and um, oh, I can't remember her name. I know her real name is Leslie Podkin, and she went ahead to do a, uh, a hit single or something anyway, but there was a little show about this little, it's like a little, this little place. Friendly and, um, Junction? It was a Friendly Junction, by golly, and well, I, it's about the time that I really quit watching. <laughs> 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 it's like I had schoolwork or something to do, you know, so I, or, or maybe just a life. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. And also, 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 I cannot talk about local shows without mentioning Flippo the Clown. Bob Marvin, Flippo the Clown, who is still, well, he's actually come back to TV here just recently, not to Channel 10 as it was then, WWBNS, but um, he's on another station. Now, anyway, Flippo was like... Um, well, he was a clown, and they had <laughs> they, they had him on basically in, um, in the early '60s. He was they had a morning show, and then late middle '60s, early '70s, he had um, a show in the afternoon, which was called the early show because well, that's the on here on the picture the, the early, early show, show <laughs> which is on as opposed to the late shows which were on later which were also pretty much local shows he yeah. would show movies in the afternoon and it could be any kind of movie he would just show it and he had a thing of commenting on them too after a while which <laughs> kind of was another thing that late night people did and so mm -hmm. but right there we have flippo and he had, he showed one of the, this one cartoon that it took me years and years and years to finally find a name of, Space Angel. It was done like um, that, uh, was that Clutch Cargo? Clutch Cargo, yeah. Oh, no. the, okay. the moving mouth things, except it was a, it was a space show. So, um, <laughs> Space Angel. <laughs> Flippo the Clown. Hmm. And Flippo used to, he used to appear in this costume. It was a bright blue costume with uh, blue and red and had white pom-poms on there. And, he had this car that would open from the front, and he'd climb out, and it was it was pretty neat. It was the whole Flippo thing was just amazing, the whole just Flippo amazing. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, let's I'll I'll let you go ahead and talk about stuff that happened down in Southern Ohio there. Southwestern Ohio. Excuse me. Southwestern Ohio. Well, it's like I grew up right between Cincinnati and Dayton, so actually I got from both big cities with with each of them had three stations. So we were right in the middle of that. After Captain Kangaroo, I really remember 
There were two out of Cincinnati. One was the Skipper Ryle show, which I actually got to be on. <laughs> and you got to wear this funky little sailor hat because the, the whole premise of that show was you're on a riverboat going down the Ohio River. So there was Skipper Ryle, of course he's a skipper like, and then of course he had like his first mate there and a whole you, you kind of went from place to place. I guess we were supposed to have the illusion that we were actually stopping getting off and visiting things. <laughs> I never forget when the group I was with was on the show, they had a tiger puppet, and the tiger was angry, and he was fussing. He was going to come out there and eat someone, and this one guy, I never let him forget this, because we went clear through high school together. <laughs> well, if Eric's out there, he actually said to the tiger, well, you can just eat me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was in the early 60s. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, wacky kid. <laughs> Another one of those angry puppet references. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. The show always ended, though, that we went to this cave, and this scared me to death. I would not go. The two things on that show that scared me to death were they had a giant jack in the box. I was terrified of jack in the boxes anyway, much less a giant one. I was the kid running up. Ah, oh, no! <laughs> the other thing was the end of the show, you went to a cave. And someone had to run in and get the treasure chest before the ghost got them, and there was a ghost in the cave that had come out. So I was the kid at the very end of the line. I was not volunteering to go in and get any, I didn't care how many sugar babies, sugar daddy, whatever they put in there. I was not going after that. So that started my television career, I guess. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Right about the same time, oh, the one thing about Skipper Ryle was they taped the show, so you got to see yourself on the show. Ooh. Uh. So, like, they, you know, you'll get to see yourself the next two days or so. The other show that came out of Channel 9 that ran about the same hour was the Uncle Al show, which actually went national for a year Ooh. and then bombed miserably. Gee, if you grew up with him, you'd just wonder why. This was Al Lewis. And when Alan Seuss did his character Uncle Al, the kitty's pal on laughing, this was a man he had to write and get permission to use that. Because <laughs> Uncle Al lasted for, he might still be going on. I don't know. The last I heard, he was just doing like a Saturday show. Mm -hmm. But he and his wife Wanda, who was Captain Wendy, who was beautiful, <laughs> she could fly too. Oh. Uh, they had, their show was live. And... Um, you basically think it started out on a farm, and then you went to the city, and then you wound up at the circus. And there was just a whole crew of characters, some puppets, some people in costumes, uh, Ringo Rango the cowboy, Powell the dog, um, gee, let's see, Lucky the clown. See, we had a clown, too. <laughs> kind of like Big Top Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah. And then there was always, um, the neat thing about... Uncle Al, something you never see really on TV a whole lot anymore, was yeah. he had to do the commercials during the show. And his sponsors were Bark's Root Beer and Mama's Cookies. Two things that taste absolutely great together. And he was real... Especially if you dip them. Yeah, he was real <laughs> known for getting mommies out of the audience to help do the commercials. <laughs> and Uncle Al was also known for having kind of like wandering mommy hands. <laughs> Mm. So my mommy wouldn't take me to that show, even for <laughs> free, because <laughs> mm. she had just heard all these Uncle Al rumors. <laughs> Watch out for that Al. Uncle Al. Ooh. In the afternoon. He might live in Ohio, but his hands are definitely <laughs> rolling. <laughs> well, in the afternoons, I don't remember any of the Cincinnati stations having anything, but the Dayton Channel had, like, an institution, the Uncle Ori Show. I don't know what Uncle Lori's real name was, but I later did find out that he lived down in Hillsboro when he retired. He was kind of like the world's oldest Boy Scout. Mm. He had like a Jughead hat on, wore a vest that had all these merit badges and stuff on, and kids, you know, by the bus load came, sat in the bleachers, no puppets. He did have a sidekick named uh, Ferdy or something. Fritz? No, Ferdy. Fritz was on Skipper Rouse's ship. And they did a little ship. slapstick. <laughs> And they play some games with the kids. Uh, showed Roger Ramjet cartoons He's and our others. Man. He's our he, yeah. You were of our nation. <laughs> and it was just like, and then he'd like offer like Cub Scout tips, a Boy Scout. You know, he was just like a real kid kind of person. Mm -hmm. Remember to drown like that fire too. <laughs> <laughs> And then he retired, and they did the weirdest thing, and I think it just started to slide down. <laughs> They took Ferdy and put him through a machine and turned him into Ken. 
and got him a sidekick named Don, and then they and they were like two vaudevillian guys in really awful clothes doing the Ken and Don show, which I got to be on because Uncle Lori quit about two weeks before I got my tickets. <laughs> ah. So the Ken and Don show was more slapstick, more cartoons, more pies, more seltzer, messier games. Kind of a prelude to the double dare the double stuff. Double dare thing, yeah. And uh, that kind of became, after that, both of those guys kind of disappeared, and the show just became kind of a strictly Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. or Saturday mid-morning afternoon kind of thing with a guy named Charlie Goodtime who was actually crazy. He was just nuts. He did a lot of... Uh, of a uh, chroma key himself in front of some background and lip sync a Spike Lee song. <laughs> a Spike Jones song. Spike Jones song. Yeah, Spike, Spike Lee song. doesn't do much singing. No, he doesn't. He should, though. <laughs> and, avoid uh, those lawsuits. <laughs> later on, he got uh, somebody in a Yogi Bear costume to co-host the show with him, and they showed Yogi Bear cartoons. <laughs> and, that's, and then I don't know what happened to it. On Saturdays, Channel 9 in Cincinnati showed something that, it, all it was was cartoons, but the main cartoon they showed that nobody else showed was a funny company, but the title was just precious because it was so 60s. It was called Cartoons A Go-Go. Ooh. And yeah, <laughs> groovy music, big flowers, and into your cartoon. <laughs> we had a lot more, though, because like I said, I grew up well when UHF, when oh, Cincinnati yeah. and Dayton both got their UA UHF about the same time. Um... They added afternoon shows. Um, Channel 19 got Larry Smith, who was like kind of like a well-known puppeteer guy. And this was my postcard from Hattie the Witch. He had a strictly puppet show, no people. Mm. And it was really neat because it was like always Hattie the Witch had some scheme and her dog Snarfy or her cat Mock would somehow find a way to mess her up. <laughs> there was a wizard. She lived in a castle on the Ohio River. <laughs> ah, amazingly so. Opposite that, from Dayton out of 22, out of Channel 22 was Clubhouse 22 with a man named Malcolm McLeod and a great big dog named Duffy and a puppet named Stan the Man. <laughs> and it was just kind of a show where a lot of silly stuff. People wrote letters. They called you and asked you to pick a door. Pick a door was their big game. Pick a door, pick a door, pick a door to win a prize. <laughs> and, you know, it was just kind of that kind of, uh, mm -hmm. let's get the audience involved. Show. Right. They never, or they rarely had a studio audience. That was mm -hmm. in the late, uh, that was in the early to middle 70s. Hmm. They just don't really have those shows much anymore. Now they got that Susie chick, but she's a nah. <laughs> <laughs> What did you have in well, Cleveland? Well, area. let's see. As far as daytime, the big thing was really like, um, uh, the only really big daytime was Barnaby out of, out of 43. <laughs> and now Barnaby, for you who haven't, haven't seen this, is a guy with a, like a straw hat and, a, and he wears a, a, a blue, um, uh, a blue jacket, very, very natty kind of person, you know, and he's, and he's really soft-spoken, and he's, and he's really tired. Well, let's go to the cartoon. And, yeah, it's just like, and it's not very interesting, really, but kids, little kids loved Barnaby. <laughs> Once you got past, say, six or seven, Barnaby really tended to lose its attraction. <laughs> I've seen Barnaby. Yeah. I, I remember the empty birdcage that talked. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, Really strange, <laughs> they, and and what really his only big competition was on the the very same station, <laughs> Superhost. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so seen him too. yeah, so Superhost was uh, the. Uh, ironically, these guys were both announcers at the station. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you every once in a while. You'd see the guy who played, and I can't remember his real name, uh, who played Superhost. It was a guy in a, a fake Superman type costume. It said at S H, and, and he had a big red nose. Yeah. And then, and then later in the evening, he might be subbing in to do a news break. <laughs> you know, and it was like, then he'd have this really low voice and talking really sternly. He's like, that's Superhost. What's Superhost doing the news for? So, and Superhost would do the would show like bad uh, bad science fiction movies I was, on on Saturdays and now he sh and he showed like three stooges and stuff and he did little skits and stuff <laughs> and and then on uh let's see the only let's see on channel 61 the old channel 61 now channel 61 is like home shopping channel 24 hours a day or something uh what would we do with it, that? I know in the 70s was the ghoul, <laughs> yeah. the ghoul. now now there was the the original character 
who started, and there was like lots of ghouls all over northern Ohio <laughs> at <Okay>. various stations. <laughs> and But the original one is this guy, Goulardi, who was actually his name, I believe, was Jim Anderson or something like that, who became an announcer at ABC. And was the announcer you always heard when they said, Tune in next week for The Love. <laughs> it's a, he was Goulardi in the 60s in in Cleveland. And then this other guy took over the job called, and he called himself the ghoul. And he wore like a fright wig and, and like uh, uh, sunglasses with one, uh, with one lens out. And, and he, he did lots of rather rude things on the air, you know. <laughs> but he was usually on like, like Saturday evenings. Actually, it was a choice between watching that and like the old Saturday Night Live pretty much and they uh, he would he would talk during the movie and you know put in little effects every time there was a chasing they have this dippy chase music but they he like dub in you know and and um, he did this one thing that got him basically kicked off the air was that uh, at the time this is like the during the time of mayor Ralph Perk in uh, Cleveland was they were doing this ad campaign saying the best things in life are in Cleveland and they showed all the wonderful things in Cleveland well the ghoul took the music and went out and shot it got got a whole video of slums in Cleveland. <laughs> it showed it, and and supposedly during the show, the mayor's office called and said, "You will not show that again, or you're off the air." And he went, "Okay." So we went on and shot new footage of the slums and showed it again the next week, and then he was gone. <laughs> Who is that man? We need him here. <laughs> That's right, the ghoul. We so had, we had a similar situation at Channel 19 in Cincinnati. A man named Dick Von Hain was a news announcer. Right. He did very little news on the station, but he was an announcer. But he was better known as the cool ghoul. Yeah. The fright wig. Yeah. He wore kind of like like a like a golf hat, you right. know. Right. And um, just white face, big red mouth. Was real famous for going. Blah, 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 blah. That was how he intro. <laughs> he, he did a creature feature. Yeah. It, now then, to counter him, Dayton in twenty two got this guy who, I swear it must have been his real life, was Dr. Creep. Mm -hmm. Big mutton chops, dressed like an undertaker, <laughs> drove a hearse. Right. They each had basketball teams and went out against each other <laughs> quite well, often. <laughs> well, speaking of that, I, I certainly can't not talk, when I'm talking about Cleveland TV, I can't talk to Miss uh, Houlihan and Big Chuck. Yeah. Now, this was done Friday nights for, I think it's still, it's now Big Chuck and Little John because Julian was also an announcer at the station and I think is running a Christian radio station in Florida or something. Yeah, yeah. Now. But at, at the time, that was like the, the big show and they'd, and they'd show bad science fiction movies and they did sketches. They had, because there's such a big uh, Polish um, population in Cleveland, they would do the certain ethnic blah blah fill in the blank <laughs> and that would be a lot of their sketches and they did pizza eating contests and I remember I remember once I was actually at one of the pizza eating contests I wasn't a participant I was a viewer they did it at a mall or something and <laughs> this is this is the kind of links people would go to to win these really dopey prizes was this guy had a pizza in front of him he had a guy go and run and get him a thing of water he threw water over it to cool it off so he could eat it faster hey. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like yeah but anyway so so you had so you had the uh, whole big chuck and also uh the canton market um, station wjan which in 17 in canton which no longer it's now uh, a Christian station. Uh, actually, it was it was one of the flagship stations of the PTL club oh <laughs> at gosh. one point. But <laughs> before it was that, there was the most uh, mild-mannered host you could ever have, Milton the Milkman, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and he would just show cartoons and stuff. But anyways, okay. it looks like we've been given the. Uh, well, let me let me just quickly. Oh. Like <laughs> Friday, <laughs> Friday night there, we had Chiller Theater, which went on to be hosted by um, by Fritz the Night Owl. Later on, it just went. To oh geez, we couldn't get out without talking about Fritz. The, the theater thing, and then um, Channel Four, the NBC thing here, um, back there it was W. Well, it still is anyway. Well, in any case, <laughs> anyway, Channel Four, they they had a, a guy out Saturday night, Jerry Beck, who would do all night theater, which was like an idea that came up from the Cincinnati area because Bob my sister Street, used to talk about kid. it, and it was hosted by. Anyway, and Jerry Beck, he would he would he did that for oh good, a good little while there, and then he would just walk around and, and you'd see him at the fair and places like that. Anyway, and it looks like we're we're being taken out because here come the graphics. <laughs> Next time on Bass Wasteland, it's the second part of our big history of DC Comics uh, with uh, Marty, with Wilbur and I. So, and it looks like we're out of here because here come the graphics. Run for your lives! Oh!